Today we're going to be checking out the Smart Filament Sensor from Big Tree Tech. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, we have a filament sensor from Big Tree Tech. Now this sensor has been around for a while, there's already a lot of great content on it, but I have gotten a lot of questions about it over the years and how you get it configured for your 3D printer. There's quite a few steps here that you have to take to get the firmware configured, get it all set up and get it working correctly, but it is kind of an interesting product, so I thought it'd be worth doing a video on. And if you're a content creator, you might be familiar with this scenario where I have to make this video before I can make the next video. Because I think this sensor is going to be a great example of some of the features that I have found in Marlin that could really help a lot of us 3D printing users out. So let's get started with this one so we can get on to the next one. Let's take a look at what we have in the box. So here's what we're dealing with. You have the smart sensor, it is quite a good sized housing. There are a lot of different options for mounting these and there's a lot of great parts over on Thingiverse. Just go check it out, including some that actually replace this whole case so you can mount it a little easier on your particular printer style. Outside of the sensor, you get a piece of Bowden tube. You do get an extra screw here if you need to use that for mounting. There's a couple of them, a couple of washers, and you get one of these Bowden couplers. You also get some wire here. They have JST three pins on both sides, so you can hook up to your board. That three pin on a lot of the Big Tree Tech boards and MKS, a lot of the other ones, that's pretty common to see for end stops and filament sensors. So for this video, really what we're interested in, most of all, is what's inside here and how this thing works. So let's just crack it open and have a peek. So here's what we got inside this housing. We just got a couple of bearings here. You can see those Bowden couplers. The filament passes through these two bearings. This one is spring-loaded up against the side of the housing, so it will press up against the filament. And then in here you have an encoder that is turned by this bearing. And that's how it tells if the filament has run out or if you're starting to get some sort of jam. And that's what the smart part of this filament sensor is trying to do. If this wheel, this encoder, doesn't turn seven millimeters of filament, that's the limit. If it doesn't see seven millimeters, it's going to trigger a stop. So not only is this going to be good for filament runout, if the spool gets hung up or the filament breaks, anything like that, this should save you from that as well. So all in all, it's a pretty simple little design with that encoder in there, but it should work out pretty well. So there's really nothing magical here. It's just a couple of bearings and an encoder. But is it better than the end stop switch we use a lot of times for filament sensors? It should be by all rights, especially if we get it set up correctly and we are able to do that seven millimeters of filament before it triggers. But we'll figure that out as we go. Now let me show you how they intend for you to set this thing up on your printer. You can't watch a 3D printing video nowadays without seeing an Ender 3, right? But for the Bowden setup, this is pretty straightforward. They give you this coupler and a piece of PTFE. You put this in the place of your stock coupler. The Ender 3 is the exact same one. So we just remove our Bowden tube on the extruder side, put our short piece of PTFE in that coupler, take our filament sensor, mount this coupler on that short piece of PTFE that's on the extruder, and then the one that feeds your hot end into the other side. And as far as mounting goes, that's all there is. Now, I'm gonna say, just seeing this, I really don't like this setup. One, when the filament does break or you have an issue, you're going to have to figure out where it is. It should be down in here somewhere, but you don't wanna to have to remove PTFE tube from these couplers, these things wear out. You don't wanna to have to do that at all. This would be much better if it was on this side of the extruder. That way you could go through a sequence, have the extruder back the filament out, all that good stuff. It would just make a lot more sense. So if you're gonna get into one of these things, I would not put it in this configuration. Plus, this adds length to your tube, your filament path. That's not a good idea. And it's just mass hanging here. That's bound to cause an issue of some kind. Plus, you're going to have a cable come off of this that needs to route down to your main board. So Think long and hard, search for different mounts for this thing before you tackle putting it on your 3D printer. For testing it today, it's not going to make a lot of difference, but make sure you integrate this correctly into your design. 
Just thoughts off the top of my head. I know we haven't got it configured and tested yet. I'm assuming the sensor does work. This is really the only downside to this style of sensor that I see. It's pretty bulky. I wouldn't want it hanging around on a Bowden tube in my filament path. That could just cause problems down the road. You're going to want to mount this somewhere, get it set up correctly so that you can use it more conveniently. Again, there's a lot of different mounts out there on the internet that you could print out to make this a whole lot better. But now we have to get it configured. So let's see how that works out. So here's the main board that we installed in this printer a couple of videos ago. This is the Big Tree Tech Mini version 3. And you do have a dedicated e-stop pin right here for filament detect. These three pins right here. So this board should be good to go. And those pins are included in the configuration. So we'll just plug in our wire for a filament sensor right there. Now, it's important to note if you have a stock Creality board, you're not going to have extra pins. You can buy a converter. It will break out the pins from the LCD plug. You could use, either use it for a leveling sensor or for a filament detect if you'd like. But you're going to have to configure that in Marlin. All this is going to have to be configured anyway. If you have some of the other old school boards, you're going to have a lot of these extra end stop pins. That was pretty common. You'll have the three pin type for X, Y, Z, Max. You can use those. Again, it's going to have to be configured in that pins file. And you will have to figure out a creative way to route your wires wherever your filament sensor might be. But the other side of that just goes right in to the bottom of your filament sensor. Now we can move to the firmware setup. And here we are in VS Code for another Marlin configuration. You know them, you love them. But I did want to touch on a few things in here. There's not a lot to setting up this sensor, but you have to get it correct. Now, remember this is the Mini V3 board. The firmware for this is pretty new. Big Tree Tech doesn't have it out there. It's just a bin file. But there is an example config in Marlin you can use right now, and that's the one we're using here today. So the first line that needs to be configured that you're going to come to is the actual filament runout sensor configuration. So you need to take a comment off of this line. There's a couple of other things you need to adjust. I'm going to switch filament enable default to true. So it will be on when we start the printer. You wouldn't have to kick it on via the LCD. We only have one runout sensor. This one does trigger in a low state. So you can take the default on that. You will keep the pull up uncommented and leave the pull down commented. Up to eight runout sensors now. Wow. We will be using the M600 process to park the head and kick the filament out. So we'll leave the script setting where it is. And then we need to adjust the filament runout distance. So this is where your seven millimeters comes in. If it detects, it's going to go ahead and let it print seven more millimeters to make sure that it's used that seven millimeters of timeout where it hasn't moved to ensure that it is actually something it needs to react to. So set that to seven. And then right below that, we need to uncomment the line that says filament motion sensor, because that's the type that we have, the one that uses the rotary encoder. The next one we're going to come to is nozzle park. Make sure that this line is uncommented and you have selected a position for your nozzle to park to. I like it to be X max Y min. It's opposite by default. So I just changed these up. X max minus 10. So 10 away from the right side of the printer. And then Y minimum. Y min positive 10. So 10 away from the front. And 20 from the print point in Z for Z lift is fine. Now we do have to do some work for the sensor itself and how it's configured on the board, but let's jump to configuration underscore adv.h and check out a setting over there first. It's way down at the bottom, just search for advanced, and you'll come to advanced pause for filament change. You want to make sure that this line is uncommented. You can set any of these settings how you wish, but this sensor being in this position, a lot of these aren't going to be very useful. Because if the filament has ran out, it's past the sensor, the extruder is not going to be able to pull it back. So some of this will be useless. That's why I highly suggest you change up how that sensor is mounted. But look through these to see if any of them are useful for your configuration. So when that's commented, let's jump back to configuration.h real quick and look at the pin setting. 
So you'll notice there is no filament runout pin up here in this configuration. That hasn't always been the case. But now a lot of boards already have that pin configured in their pins file. So let's jump over to our pins file. We'll just go to source, pins, then pick the processor that you're using. This one is a 32G0. It's the only board using that processor. So we'll open that one up, scroll on through, and you're gonna see your filament runout pin. So as I said before, it is labeled E-stop. So that's just a comment telling you what that pin is. It's PC15. So we're good here. But depending on the board you use, if you have a board that you don't have a filament runout pin, you can configure this pin just by adding this block of statement. If it doesn't have one, which most of them probably will. But then just use that pin from whatever pins you decide to use from inside this file. So let's say you want to use your Z-stop pin as your filament runout. This PC2 would be configured as your filament runout pin. Just overtype it down here, and I would set this if, to a negative one if you're not going to use it as your Z-stop pin, just to be safe. So you've probably seen me do this a million times before, configure these pins files. Just know that if you need to use another pin, come in here, check it out. And that should be all we need to do. We can go ahead and compile, put it back on the printer. I highly suggest you use your Marlin build tool. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. That is available under extensions. Just type in Marlin. We put our new firmware.bin file on our SD card, plugged it in, booted up. When we came up, we knew we were on 2093, newest version of Marlin currently. So we know we have been upgraded. Now we set that filament sensor enable true, so it should be enabled already, but let's go ahead and check. Configuration, filament runout sensor is set to on. So we should be good. Let's go ahead and preheat and get some filament loaded and we'll test this out. We got some print solid Jesse PLA. This is safety orange, one of my faves. We'll put that through. It's gonna go inside that housing the bearing should let it load pretty easily. You might have to twist it just a little bit, but it went right on through. And we are ready for a test print so we can see if this filament sensor is gonna work. Our Vinci is off and running. Let's let it get a few layers in and then we'll cut the filament and see what happens. So we're about half done. Let's go ahead and give that filament a snip. Now remember, the sensor is right here. The extruder gears are right here. Now it's going to have to go all the way through here before it's going to trip that sensor. It's not actually going to sense that the filament is gone. It's going to sense that the extruder has stopped pushing it. So let's see how it does. So the filament is at the extruder gear right now. So the filament just left the extruder gear. and it took about eight seconds for the sensor to trigger. So that's pretty good. Now we're gonna go through the filament change sequence, this M600 we've already parked. We're waiting for filament to unload and since it pushed it through, it's not gonna be able to grip it to kick it out. So it thinks it unloaded the filament. Now we have two choices here. If you just wanna continue with the filament, you can probably just go ahead and feed that new filament into the extruder and allow it to push the rest down the Bowden tube. That should work. If you needed to clear a jam or something like that, you would have to take this apart and pull that filament out. Since it's back in here, you could probably just take out this side, remove it, and then go on your way. But you would have to feed it manually all the way back down to the nozzle. Let's go ahead and leave it in and we'll just take our filament and put it back into the extruder gear and we'll hit the button to allow it to go ahead and preheat. Preheat's done. It wants us to insert filament. We'll go ahead and hit the button to continue. It's going to do a purge sequence. It's feeding that filament back in and it's already kicking it out the nozzle. And it was able to successfully push that filament back through the sensor and continue the stream of filament on down to the nozzle. So let's just go ahead and hit continue. And remember, that really didn't simulate a filament break. The break should do the same exact thing, 
But this is more of a simulation if that filament got hung up because of where the extruder is. So I'm satisfied that the sensor is working as expected. So the filament sensor does work as advertised, and it's nice to have a sensor that can tell you when the filament's hung up as well as when it's broken and you need to load some more. But remember, we are printing off the SD card in this case, so that sequence does work. There are a couple different ways that you could be printing with your 3D printer. Like if you're printing from one of these TFT screens like a lot of folks like to do now. You can't control that filament sensor when it's plugged into the board while you're printing from one of these screens using the SD card or this U drive. But what you can do is plug that filament sensor in to the filament detect pins on the screen. Then that sensor will tell the screen, the screen will perform that M600 for you, and it should work just fine. Now, there are a lot of different versions and updates to firmware for these screens. Some of the older versions did not work like that so well. So make sure you have the correct version. Test it before you go on a really long print. Make sure it's going to work on your screen. But that should work out just fine. The other scenario would be if you were using some sort of host that had some software on it that was streaming G-code to your 3D printer. You could use Octoprint, Repetier Host, Astroprint. That's not going to interact all that well with this filament sensor, with that M600 script when it runs. You would still have to have an LCD screen on your printer to go through the cycle, unload the filament, load it back in. You're not going to be able to do it from that host. That host is just going to sit there and pause and wait until you intervene. But I have found some pieces of firmware in Marlin that let you do that exact thing. I always use Octoprint, but it will probably work with a lot of other software. And that's going to be the topic for the next video, and the whole reason why I wanted to get this video done and get this set up in the first place. So that will be it for today. I'll see you really soon on the next one.